and Stephanie Madden and um, another family here in Lake Lakeland put on this event this weekend for the youth and it was a sexual purity conference and had a lot of really good speakers. I know that for one my heart was really just burdened and touched for this next generation and um, I want to tell a testimony real briefly and then I'm going to ask Brandon Jenkins to come up. And I'm personally excited about Brandon Jenkins coming uh, because I've known him a long time. He's been a part of the church. But Brandon has also started substituting here in the public school system. And part of what he's going to talk about this morning um, is the sexual immorality that is pervading um, the high schools. And he is going to pass out a sheet of music. And I want you to know that I have approved this. It is highly offensive. I'll just let you know, but it's the reality of what's going on in the school system. And I'll let him tell you a little bit more, but you use your discretion. If you don't want your children to see it, they don't have to see it. But I would like every parent or couple or whatever to get a copy of this just so that you understand what we're dealing with. So if you get mad at this, come get angry at me. Don't talk to Brandon about it. I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. So I was sitting at Culture Rock up in the balcony uh, this weekend. I'm at one of the sessions. We had Bella with us, and she was kind of getting cranky. And um, there was a man that came and sat down um, right in front of us. And as soon as he sat down, I just received just an incredible open vision that was very specific. And there were three things that I... Um, ended up telling him about and one of the things that the Lord had really spoken to me about was severe uh, chronic back pain that this man had been going through and several back surgeries that he had had and I uh, the Lord had talked to me about Nehemiah and about this man building a wall and if you guys remember um, two there's two guys um, that really hindered Nehemiah's ministry um, they intimidated him they tried to put fear in his heart so that he couldn't uh, prevent the uh, excuse me couldn't keep building the wall and I felt like this man's back pain was directly attributed to a lot of the um, just the fear and intimidation really enemy type stuff so right before the session ended he went up the balcony and there was kind of like where you have to partner with the prophetic so I told Morgan, here we go, and I chased him up the balcony. <laughs> and um, up on top of the balcony at First Baptist at the mall, I tapped this man on the shoulder, and he turned around. And I just gave him one of the most clear, specific, prophetic words that, that he's ever, or I, I would say I've ever given to anyone. It was super powerful. And you could just tell the Holy Spirit was really just ministering to this man. And as I turned to leave, he introduced himself as Jay Dennis, the senior pastor at First Baptist at the Mall. I've never seen him before, really heard of him, but I want to tell you that uh, he, he wants to meet this week, but I really believe that there's a... Uh, he said, I want to hear about this prophetic ministry stuff. Uh, but I'm really, I'm really believing that the Lord is going to just continue to just strategically place us. I had had a prophetic word about six months ago as we continue to grow as a church of three pastors here in Lakeland that would lay down resources to us in this ministry. So I don't know if he's one of them, um, but I just it just continued to uh, amaze me. I, mean, I don't know how many people sit in that sanctuary, like maybe a 1,000 or 500, but we're in the balcony of all places, and God just sits this guy right down in front of us. Um, it's just amazing. So that's just a cool testimony. I hope you encourage. Be on the lookout. You never know who yeah, you're sitting around, right. who the Lord yeah. wants to touch. Just go with what he has to say. So Brandon, come on up. This is this is Brandon Jenkins. On the, on the basketball team, they called him Little Baby Jenks. So that's what I like to call him. But, uh, I'm going to give him a mic and. Uh, We're going to hand these out, uh, but don't look at them yet. <laughs> now sit there, don't look at them. So, yeah, I, um, I substitute here in, in Polk County, um, specifically at McKeel, but I've been to, to several. You know, McKeel, I coach there too, but I've been to several different schools um, substituting, so I've kind of seen it all. I've been to some of the worst schools um, academically. Um, and McKeel is probably one of the better schools uh, 
educational wise, but um, I want to read a quote by Martin Luther. When I first read this, I was so burdened and it just, it almost, it gripped me with fear. Here's what he says. He says, I greatly fear that schools for higher learning are wide gates to hell if they do not diligently teach the Holy Scriptures and impress them on the young folk. I'll read it again. I greatly fear that schools for higher learning are wide gates to hell if they do not diligently teach the Holy Scriptures and impress them on the young folk. And I, I mean, like I said, I've been to several different schools here in Polk County and um, I see it all, I just see all kinds of stuff going on. Um, stuff that grieves me. Uh, most of the time I just want to be, you know, go to class and preach to them, um, but you can't really do that. Uh, but I've had some opportunities uh, to do some things. Um, but I want to give you just a little uh, information about Polk County, this school district. Um, Polk County, this district um, of schools is, is the central location in Florida. Um, it's the fourth largest district in Florida. Um, there's 172 schools here um, in Polk County. 90, around 93,000 uh, kids going from kindergarten to 12th grade are in this school district. Um, so I think this is like the place we're located, this church, it's really strategic to where it's placed at. I mean, 93,000 students. Um, there are, in the U.S., around 93,000 um, school districts. Uh, Polk County is ranked 29th largest. Um, so this district is massive. Um, I mean, there's kids everywhere. Um, it's, it's, it's everywhere. And I could, I could go into stories um, just about what's what's going on in schools. I mean, it's just Andy, my brother teaches over at Southwest, and I mean, it's just, it's just getting, in my eyes, it's getting really, really bad. Um, it's just getting worse and worse. So I want to share a dream that I have, and then we'll, we'll go into this, um, the lyrics here and whatnot. But I had a dream probably a month ago, and I'm not a big dreamer like Jerry, so this is kind of rare for me. I got kind of excited, but <laughs> at the same time, the, the dream was really, it was, it was heavy on me. Um, I was subbing at a school, and I, I walked in the bathroom, and you know when you walk in the bathroom, you can see under the stools if, if someone's in there. Um, well, I saw some feet, so I, I figured, you know, some boys in there or whatnot. Um, and so I walk in, I open the door to go into my the stool, and I can see through um, the crease there. And as I looked through, it just like all opened up. And I saw several students, three or four boys, three or four girls, um, participating in sexual immorality. And they looked right at me, and I looked at them, and they were so unashamed. They just looked at me. Um, and I'm just, like, totally blown away. Like, what in the world is going on? Like, what is happening? Um, and they just looked at me, and then they just continued to do what they were doing. And um, I turned around to walk out of the bathroom, um, and then uh, two girls walked in. And they began to get undressed, and they just walked into the, the stool with the rest of the kids. Um, and I woke up from this dream and I was, I mean, just so burdened um, because I, I know that stuff is happening in our school systems. I, I guarantee it's happening. Um, and so if you want to turn this sheet over of the lyrics, you can just, I'll give you a moment to read through it. Uh, it's a song by Bruno Mars. Um, it's called Locked Out of Heaven. This guy, this song is actually ranked number two on um, the top 40 like hit list. Uh, for the radio. So this song is being played over and over again. Um, but yeah, as you're reading it, I mean, it's just, it's pretty, it's mind-blowing to me. Um, and so I was at, see, Thursday I was, I was subbing at McKeel, um, or sorry, Friday, and it was, um, I was subbing in a class where most of the kids were going on a field trip, so I only had like seven kids in this one class, and um, the kids asked if they can listen to music. And which back in my day, and I'm sure a lot of the older folks, you just don't listen to music, you know, you don't, you just go to class and you learn, that's about it. But now it's, it's really common for kids to say, hey, can we listen to music? Um, and at McKeel, it's controlled. You know, you tell them when they can or cannot. At other schools, they just kind of do whatever they want to do. Um, they'll walk around with headphones in. It's just, it's totally, a totally different atmosphere than, than what I was raised up in. Um, and so they said, yeah, can, you know, can I listen to music? And I said, yeah, sure. Um, so she's just playing music out loud. Um, the song she was playing, I asked her, I said, well, who, who's the, uh, who sings this and whatnot? And she told me, you know, Bruno Mars, Locked Out of Heaven. So I just thought I'd look up the lyrics, um, and there they are. Um, 
And then I, I looked up um, some more information on this guy and just some comments he said concerning his music. Um, here's what he says. It's better if you don't understand. Just listen and have a good time. Um, that's the resp response Bruno Mars will give you with a smile when asked to describe his sound in music. He would much rather sing, perform, and write his songs than talk about them. Mars describes his time behind the scenes as important to develop uh, to his development as an artist. I realize that you have to have a good you have to go into this industry as an artist with a clear vision and understanding of who you are. Being so young when I was first signed, I never really had a sense of who I wanted to be. Now things are really working out because everything that I'm singing, writing, and composing is really me. And I'm just and I'm not here just to, to bash him, but it's just like you guys see what, what's going on when people right. produce this music. Like, this stuff is coming from inside of them, and it, they think it's okay. Um, and so I just, I've been praying and saying, Lord, what can we do with, with this is such a huge issue. I mean, there's 93 students out there listening to this music day in and day out. And it's like, Lord, what can we do? I feel like it's just impossible um, to attack this, this whole thing that's going on. Um, but I was... I was in prayer this morning, um, and uh, the Maddens were, were talking about what happened at Culture Rock. And she just mentioned, you know, it's the power we have in Christ that's going to change this thing. Um, I don't really think there's some, some new great idea we've got to do, but really it's just grinding it out, getting on our knees and praying before the Lord. Um, it's the power in Christ in us that's going to do this thing. Um, going out, evangelizing, um, testifying to the, the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to these students. Because um, I know, I know daily I'm with my basketball team, and I mean I, I freely talk about Christ among them. Uh, they know who I am. I'm not afraid to to proclaim it. I'm not ashamed. Um, but it's 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 really it's really I've been learning just to get on my knees and pray um, for this whole situation because this is it's just so huge to, in my eyes. Um, but I know to the Lord He can I mean He can do all this uh, through us, and so. Um, I'm learning too. It's not about our ability, but our about our availability. You know, are we available to do this? Um, so I just wanted to share that. That's been on my heart the past uh, month, and it's continuing to grow. Um, and on the other hand, um, you know, Jerry talked about and the Madness talked about culture rock. Like that's an awesome thing going on, and I believe the Lord is. That's what the Lord is growing, um, and is going to use heavily and mightily. Um, so it's kind of like I told you all the bad things that were going on, but no, the Lord is doing good things, yeah. you know, in, in the lives of these kids. And so uh, just be encouraged. Uh, hopefully this gives you uh, uh, something to add on your prayer list because it is something that's definitely needed. Um, so thank you. Um, you guys know uh, my heart. and I've continually said I feel like the church just wants to stick their head in the sand and act like nothing is going on out there. And it's just astounding that music and lyrics like that are just, that's what kids are listening to every day. And we wonder why the world is going the way that it's going. So we can make a stand. We can do something about it. And I just really want to encourage you, you know, to, and, and, you know, and, and again, I, I feel like the line is, is so gray between the church and the world. You know, you, you put these lyrics out to most Christians are like, oh, yeah, I listened to that song last week. You know, there, there's it's just we got it. We got to widen that gap. Uh, I, I tried to encourage that. I've said before, I, you know, Morgan and I have been doing a relationship series on Thursday nights. And I've got so many emails from people saying, well, we'll come back when you talk about something important. We'll come back when you bring a prophetic word. We'll come back when... You know, and I've just reiterated the problem in the church is that we're not having healthy relationships and marriages. If we need to talk about anything else, we need to talk about this specific issue. So whether it's alarming to you or it's confirming to you, we need to wake up and do something about it. And uh, Morgan and I went for our baby appointment last week, and uh, I point blank just engaged the doctor in a conversation about abortion and those things. And um, you know, she just delivered um, a 10-year-old's baby here in Lakeland last month. And um, a little 10-year-old girl, and the parents absolutely saw nothing wrong with it. So um, this stuff comes every day. So um, next up, I want to invite um, Morgan's mom, uh, Sandy Dilly. Your mom, Jeremiah. Yeah. 
<laughs> and proud to be. So um, I'm going to, I have an outline. I'm going to try to stay at task because I know um, we have a time restraint in, in, in respect to Pastor Jeremiah. <clears throat> um, so who am I? He said, I am Morgan's mom, Jeremiah's mother-in-law, Bella's grandma. And I also have a son, Preston, who's in Ohio. I'm from Ohio. We're from Ohio. Morgan came down here to Southeastern, so that's how I ended up here. Um, what I want to tell you about today is really my recent, since I only have 10 minutes, it's going to be my recent testimony of really what God has done in the last two years. Um, I did a quick who am I to add to that. Um, I did grow up all of my life in Dayton, Ohio, in a middle upper class family, in a Christian family. I was raised in the church. So part of my testimony is that even though I knew the truth at an early age, um, it's still possible to go off the path, um, which I did for a while. But the main message I have for you today is the promises of God, and I love the songs that we sang this morning because it's so related. Um, that God, I will not forget your promises. So through my trials, um, that's what I learned to do is really lean on the word and God's promises. And he is faithful and he delivers. So I hope this encourages someone today. I stood before this church. It's a very different church today. We're a lot larger. We have more members. But the founding members that were here, a few of you are in the room. Um, I testified about a year ago. In fact, it was about February of 2012. Um, when God made a way for me to get here to Florida, which I'll quickly review. And I testified my issues, my problems. As Jeremiah says, our testimony isn't about our problems, but I just have to share those so that you know the glory of God, the faithfulness of God, the promises of God, and how he does deliver and rescue his children who love him. So I, I testified before this church um, that in when I came in February of uh, 2012, what happened to me in 2011 is um, that I had a breakup, an engagement. I'd been dating this gentleman from Dayton for about three and a half years. He proposed to me, which I thought my dreams came true. And then two months later, he broke up with me. That same year, um, so I'm, I go by quarters. Quarter two, breakup, broken heart. Quarter three, I found out that I had skin cancer. In quarter four, I found out that my job was going to be eliminated in Dayton, and I was going to have to relocate to keep that job. However, um, when the problem started, and I would say starting with that broken heart, I really felt like I was living in ashes. I'm sure many of you in this room have been there. When your hopes, your dreams were devastated, I'd had a long road to that point as it was um, due to some bad choices I made and bad choices other people made that affected my life. So um, in my devastation, another, um, let me read this scripture, but this is what the Lord brought me to in the scripture. I have the seers just in case. All right. In Psalm 34, 4 through 10, Psalm 34, 4 through 10, and some of you may need this today. It says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. And God absolutely delivered me. So to talk about the hope, in the midst of my ashes, my devastation, my beautiful daughter became pregnant with Bella Grace. We can show Bella Grace now. And <laughs> I have a prop. And I think about the song, Love Came Down and Rescued Me, and I'm not kidding, when I had no hope in um, May of 2011, I get a, a call from the kids, and the Lord brought Bella. And so if you see Grandma really coveting Bella, you'll know why. So she's part of the love and the deliverance that the Lord brought me. Beauty for ashes, as it says in 61, um, Isaiah 61, 3, beauty for ashes. Um, God will make a way. And I'm going to jump to Isaiah 45, get to the right one, 45, 1 to 3. 
So Isaiah 45, 1 to 3, it says, This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of. And I can't tell you how many times in the last two years I hold hands with God. If you see me doing this in church, I'm holding hands with God. To subdue nations before him, to strip kings of their armor, to open doors before him so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you. He will level the mountains. He will break the gates of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give thou the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord. I hung on these promises even when I was in the ashes and when um, I had the needs there. When Morgan became pregnant with Bella, I knew God planted a seed that I was to come to Florida, and I began to pray, and this is in 2011. Through this job change, that wasn't only a scary time, but it was an answer to prayer. It was an answer. It was part of God's deliverance to my life. So I actually, instead of moving to the next city that my company wanted me to go to, to stay with them, I took a voluntary severance. So when I came here with these problems in February of 2012, um, these issues, these troubles, right, as it says in Psalms, I was here basically to give you an idea. I um, put my stuff in storage in Dayton. I came here on faith. On, I came here truly on these scriptures, on God's promises. I had a car, two suitcases, no job, skin cancer, and a broken heart. But the Lord delivered me from these problems. So that's reviewing the situation. Um, and, you know, again, he delivered me from all my troubles. Within two to three months, I found this fantastic job with Florida Hospital in Orlando, Florida, which is where I live now, one hour from here. Hallelujah. Praise God. So not only do I get to be part of this wonderful family, this prophetic church ministry, um, but I also get to see my beautiful grandbaby, my beautiful family. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the Lord healed my cancer. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And he healed my heart. And of course the heart takes a little bit longer. And so um, he's brought me so many revelations. I've grown closer to him. He is my husband, and I'm here to serve him. And I just want to end um, with that God is faithful, that we can hold to his promises, that he will go before us. If you're in a situation today that seems impossible, we know that God, through God, all things are possible. Amen. And the scripture that I want to leave you with um, and I feel like this is what I really went through, is 1 Peter um, 1, 6, and 7. And it talks about the refiner's fire. And some of you may feel like you've gone through that. It says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold will perish which perishes even though refined by fire may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So the rest of my story, I think about when I first put this together, we had uh, Corey Asbury here for the conference. And I feel like that God has caught me back up in the story that all my life will now be for his yeah. glory. Thank you. Yeah, Corey emailed me a couple weeks ago and said that we were his favorite place that they played at all over the nation. So um, we're trying to schedule with them uh, the last weekend in August. Right when the kids get back, so we're looking for more. But that was fun. That's honestly probably my favorite thing we did last year. It's like five seconds passed, and we were worshiping for five hours. It was fun. It's a good time. It's always good to leave a place at midnight and just feeling like it was five minutes. Um, so it was a really good time. That was encouraging. Um, the land creeps. Will you guys stand up real quick? Okay, wave at everybody.
All right, I want to tell you a little bit about them. Um, when I went to New York, to Yorktown Heights Assembly of God, and did the prophetic ministry, they were there, and it so happened that they were moving to Lake Wales um, right around this time, and um, I invited them over to Heart of the Father. I just want to make them welcome. It's always really funny when stuff like that happens, yeah. uh, but uh, just excited to have them here and just want to encourage them. Um, Brianna and Daniel, are you all here? Will you guys stand up? I want to launch just, uh, I want to launch some more prayers toward their way. Uh, when were you due last Monday? Last Monday. Okay. So we got a baby any day now. So you just stretch your hands. We just want to continue to, to keep the, the pregnancy, the delivery, just in prayer. Um, Lord, we just pray right now for this beautiful baby girl, Lord, that we're going to meet any day. Lord, and we just pray, Lord, for just a healthy pregnancy, a healthy delivery. Lord, wisdom for all those involved in the delivery process. Lord, we speak peace over their home, Lord, that there would not be any worry, Lord, or fear. Lord, we just cover, Lord, this pregnancy, this baby, in the blood of Jesus. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Can I give a brief word of testimony? Come on, come on down. You're on the price is right. <laughs> How dare you usurp my authority? <laughs> Hi, my name is Nancy. Thursday Nancy. night, I just want to say during the worship time, it was uh, that Jesus the power of Jesus will break every chain, yes. will break every chain, will break every chain. Yes. I was healed Thursday night of dizziness that has plagued me for over a month. It has been a concern. I've told only those that are closest to me, Peter knew, that in the night I would spin, I would get up. If I went to the bathroom in the night, I would just have to grab the walls. Um, in the morning to get up, I would need to hold the bed and get my bearings. Even if I didn't move at all, lay flat in bed, my world would spin, and I'd just get my balance. And I thought, okay, well, I've had vertigo before, but I've never had anything last for over a month. And I was concerned, preparing to, that I would go to the doctors, that all of this. So Thursday night, right there, I came down. Um, Nikki gave a, a, a great little word that night, and there was a move, and you could sense that God was moving. And I didn't even... I. I I was praying about it again because I've been believing that the power of God was at work in my body. The healing power of work was in my body right now. And so I was claiming it and declaring it. And I just felt this. I almost called Matt. I almost went to Matthew. Matt, I almost went to and said, okay, Matt, come on, let's pray, let's pray. But I was just right there by myself, and it was just ever so slight. It was ever so slight. That's the thing. And I just received it. I said, I believe I'm healed really right now. The, oh, yeah. the, the dizziness has lifted, and I have not been dizzy since Thursday night right there. Yeah. Last but not least, um, I'm going to ask Miss Tremble to come on up. This has just come out with a CD. What's it called? Further Your Kingdom. Further Your Kingdom. And uh, she has CDs available for sale. But I've asked her to sing a song um, off of this CD, and Morgan and I have one. And it's really just been ministering to us. But I just want to let you know um, that the Lord's just doing incredible things in Melissa's life. And um, she's got a heart. They've done events called Breath of Fresh Air for Women. And I just want to. Just honor the Lord and give Him glory uh, for the gift that is placed inside of Melissa. And if you'd like to buy a CD, she's going to sing a song off of this new album. And I pray that it encourages us and uh, then we'll close. I am actually so humbled to be able to share this with you. And I'll try not to get emotional. <laughs> it's hard not to. But this song, it's so perfect for today because the title of this song is The God Who Sees Me. And this ties right into what Nancy just shared. Nancy, he sees you. 
He saw you when you were kneeling right there in faith. He saw you and he healed you. And Brennan, the things that you're talking about that are going on in the school, he, he sees that. He sees you fighting for that. And he's going to honor that. He's going to be faithful to that. And same thing for you. He has seen you through all of those things. And what happened one time, I was just spending some time reading in Genesis, Genesis 16, 13. And it talks about the story of Hagar. And usually I think a lot of people try to identify with Abraham and Sarah, but they don't think much about Hagar. They think, eh, you know, go, do what you need to do, that type of thing. But the Lord just really touched my heart for her because she was being obedient to what she was told to do. She was a servant, so she was doing what she was told to do. And then after Sarah saw that, she then had feelings, you know, uncomfortable feelings. And so Hagar is asked to leave with her son. She's a mother at this point. She has learned what it's like to be a mom, not just to watch some other kids run around, but she is a mother at this point, and she's asked to leave. And she is out in the desert dying. She is crying out, God, why? What's going on here? I could just imagine myself, I'd be like, okay, Wait a minute, what did I really do here? But God has such a gentle, tender heart that he would send his angel to speak to her. And she said, you are the God who sees me. And there was no doubt. And I don't even know what the rest of her days were like. I'm not a Bible scholar by any means. But I just have to say that there is no doubt in my mind that every day when she looked up into the sky, she knew that there were eyes looking back at her.
want, I think that's track five, The God Who Sees Me. But if you would like a CD, they're $8. So it's awesome. I'm excited. I'm, uh, I'm just excited with what God is doing at Heart of the Father, and every joint really does supply. And uh, it's just so, so encouraging to hear from different people what God is doing. And like I said, we're back on track, so we're going to be doing this um, once a month. So you guys stand with me. Look at your bulletin, your calendar for things this week. Um, the big one, we've got that marriage retreat this weekend. I um, encourage you guys, if you can, to make some time and come out to that. Um, we've got the meal right after church here down at Christina Park, just right off South Florida. On the left-hand side, the guys are already there, and the food will be ready at noon. So grab your side dish, something, and I uh, look forward to seeing you. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for, Lord, every uh, testimony that went forth. Lord, your word says in the book of Revelation, Lord, that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word yeah. of our testimony. Right. Lord, we just pray that we would cherish, Lord, what you do. Lord, I pray that we would not forget about it. Lord, give us the boldness and courage to share with others, Lord, what you're actively doing. But we just pray, Lord, for a great time of community and fellowship, Lord, down at uh, Christina Park. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would continue to build meaningful relationship with one another. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.